Welcome everybody to the Art Workshop. I'm Christopher Epling. Really appreciate you tuning in today here on Pike TV. We have some great stuff in store for you. Again, we focus on art. We also look a little bit about how art relates to our own region here in the county and Eastern Kentucky as a whole. Uh, today I thought about, you know, what, let's go a different direction with things. We focus a lot on cartoons, but art is so much more than just uh, cartoons and comics, uh, which is not only the only subject we focus on. We look at ap application. Uh, that means how do you use color? How do you use the tools available for you in art uh, in a way to, to create something? So we look at a huge, vast range of, uh, of different topics on the art workshop. But one we haven't really focused on a whole lot is landscape drawings. And landscape and architectural drawings are a huge part of art. And there's careers based all around uh, even, even that subject area. So we're going to look today a little bit about landscape drawing and, and some architectural work too. Um, so I hope you enjoy the episode. For some resource material that I brought today, um, we have a few different things. I always like to highlight Kentucky artists that are doing uh, whatever subject or topic we're looking at, if I can. Um, uh, and there's a, there's a lot of uh, different options for us when we look at architectural and landscape drawing. Uh, Robert Powell is a Kentucky artist. He creates um, uh, beautiful landscape and architectural drawings that hang in, in a lot of the city uh, uh, buildings and, and government buildings all around the state. And uh, Robert has a Historic Kentucky Bluegrass, which is a book that he compiled of different drawings of, of the different um, key areas in the state. Uh, when we open up the book, one thing we want to notice is, is that how exactly uh, Robert applies his craft. Um, when you approach landscape drawings and you approach uh, architectural drawings, you notice that there's, there's a two different elements going on here. Um, you'll see some very straight lines, of course, for the architectural type work. These lines are, are all very uh, parallel. They're, they're, there's geometry affected into the, into the design, of course, because you're drawing buildings. But then also uh, with that, you'll notice that, that the, um, the landscape portion of the drawing is a little less um, a little less uniform. It's a little less um, um, clean. It, it's more. It's 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 like landscape appears. Um, there's there's not a lot of symmetry in 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 nature. Nature uh, usually does not work in straight lines. So um, when you combine these two together, landscape drawings and architectural drawings, you get a really neat effect. Now, of course, not all of Robert's book is. Is, is, is landscape. Um, there's a huge focus on architectural work and you'll notice that each county is highlighted here in this book and in this book you'll see different key buildings or, or um, landmarks or structures or even a, here's, a, here's a theater, the Mac Theater in Estill County. And all of these are highlighted in inside of, um, of this wonderful book that Robert's uh, created. Now Robert has, has done this work for a long time, this type of work. Um, um, He's, he's worked for, for government to create um, these types of images and things for, for the uh, government of Kentucky and, and he's focused on each county so he's highlighted each county. Um, one thing that I'd like to point out too is that, is that when you look at architectural drawings and landscape drawings that, that contrast between nature and something man-made it, it, it comes out more in art and this is all pen and ink drawings. Um, so you can imagine the time that it took to really uh, create some of these, especially the really uh, complex uh, geometric and uh, symmetric uh, drawings of some of the buildings, such as uh, in, in um, Uncle Tom's Cabin here um, in Lancaster, or, or we could even look at uh, Governor William uh, Owsley's home here also in Lancaster. So there's, there's, there's a lot to work with and there's a lot to, to play around with when it comes to landscape and architecture. Now Robert Powell also creates um, calendars based on his sketchbooks. Uh, this is a 2014 calendar and this is a little bit larger so you'll be able to see a little bit better what we talk about when we look at architectural drawings and landscape drawings. Um, there's an entire field based around creating these types of artwork and pieces of artwork for uh, different types of elements uh, such as um, real estate companies. Um, you, and architecture is this whole field by itself, of course, uh, engineering and, and um, construction and, and artists are required to create foundations and, 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 and build up from that foundation to, to design um, a, a, um, you know, a building or structure that will last, that will hold, that will stand. and 
And so there's an entire field based around it. So if you're interested in drawing and perhaps you, you're not really, um, you know, your, your interest doesn't lie so much in cartooning, remember that these, these are options for artists out there um, to, to create and get inside of the field of art and work in the field of art. Um, but also um, uh, uh, from a professional standpoint, you know, as, a, as an architect or, or, or an engineer, okay? So this is one more example of uh, Robert's work. He's put these calendars out now for a while, and um, some banks will even hire him to, you know, um, produce content for, for a particular calendar. Uh, one thing that I love about his work is, is his architectural drawings they seem to be the emphasis of his work. What I mean by that is if you look at this particular drawing you'll notice and it's kind of hard to see but if you could if you could see the line marks that he's used to create the foliage in the trees and, and, and the, um, the bushes and the, and the hedge you will see that he's used lines that, that, that are straight lines so he's not using cross hatching and we talked about cross hatching before. Cross hatching is exactly what it sounds like. You start out making parallel lines in one direction, then you'll go back over it and you'll make X's. You'll cross those lines with other lines. When you do that, it gives the effect of shading. It gives the effect almost of a three-dimensional shape when you do that. Robert doesn't do that so much. He uses straight lines uh, for most of his shading and most of his trees. So uh, when you look at his work, you see that. There's a contrast there. Um, here's the Putnam County Courthouse. Of course, this is in Indiana. This this is a book here actually crosses the border of Kentucky a little bit with other states. Um, it's more focus was up north in northern Kentucky, um, but it's it's beautiful work. I think that landscape drawings, uh, when done well, uh, they look amazing, especially in pen and ink. You can imagine how much time it took. Here's the capital, uh, Kentucky, um, uh, Kentucky's capital, Frankfurt. You know, would you look at the the time that it must have taken Robert to sit down and make sure that these lines are all um, you know symmetric that they're proportional meaning that if if I were to um, stand it in front of the Capitol in Frankfurt at this particular angle looking at the building and, and I were to hold this up and look at it then it would be proportional meaning that you know the scale would would look similar to what the drawing looks like so what I mean by that is that if if this was done well and I held this up and looked at the at the Capitol building I would see that maybe this rotunda wasn't you know twice as big in reality as what Robert's drawn it here so landscape drawings are are very um, unique and wonderful in their own way and today we're going to be approaching um, a landscape drawing we're going to try this cabin um, together um, in the art workshop. One more artist I do want to reference really fast before we get into our actual um, project for today is, is a guy by the name of Norman uh, uh, Pettingill and he was an Alaskan artist. He's passed away but this book was created to showcase his art. Now there's a specific reason I want to show this artist today. We're talking about landscape and we're talking about architecture together and you get, uh, Norman lived in the backwoods of Alaska his whole life he created these images for postcards and that's how he made a living. He wasn't really well known. Um, of course, like it happens with most artists, until he passed away his work became popular and people sought it uh, as collecting it as, as pieces of art. But if you notice what Robert does with his landscape drawings, they're much more detailed. There's an emphasis more on the landscape rather than the architecture um, in contrast to Robert's work. Um, so. For instance, if you look at, at, at this drawing here, he, he incorporates also cartoons. So if you were, you're interested in cartooning still, but you also like landscape drawings, well, there's no probably better uh, uh, reference or example than, than uh, Norman's work. He would do these large murals. This is, is about 21 by 30 inches here. He'd done this in 1953. And this is ink on paper, so this is all pen and ink drawing. But you'll see all these various characters. And it'll, you know, you could sit and look at this and pick out different things happening for a very long time. You can't take it all in at once. So architecture and landscape combined really can pull a neat effect out in art. You don't have to necessarily keep with uh, um, one certain focus. You could do a lot of different things. And, and so uh, we're going to go ahead now and, and take a take a second to get our materials together because we are going to work on something uh, together centered around this subject area. Okay, so I hope everybody has paper ready at home. Um, 
You also need, for today's uh, lesson, you're going to need a pencil. You don't need a mechanical pencil. I, that's what I have here available is a mechanical pencil. Um, also, you're going to need an ink pen, of course. It doesn't necessarily have to be one like mine. Any ink pen will work as long as a um, ballpoint pen will work. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then, of course, you're also going to need an eraser. I have an eraser pen here. That just means that, like the mechanical pencil, when I push this down, uh, the eraser comes out the end. Okay, and then I also have one of these neat little dinosaur erasers, which reason being I didn't have an eraser with me today. So um, I'm borrowing a um, pink dinosaur eraser for uh, today's uh, lesson. So anyway, uh, we're going to start out and, and you want to take your pencil, get your paper ready here because this is what we're going to be working on. And I always like to look at the reference of what it is I'm, I'm going to be attempting to draw. One of the things we're going to be avoiding today is this, this fence. Uh, this fence is jagged. It, it, it goes back and forth. We're going to put a simple fence on there. So we're going to start out now. It's really good to have an angle to work with. An angle is a device that helps you make straight lines. If you don't have an angle at home or a ruler, it's okay. don't necessarily uh, need one. But we're going to start out, though, by drawing the line to the top of this porch. We always start out with one focus point of a drawing. That's going to help us to uh, create the rest of our piece. Now, this line, this is an old cabin. The line does not have to be perfect, but it is important to make it at least somewhat um, straight. Once we have that first line of this drawing, we can build the rest of our drawing around it. Okay, I notice there's one, two, three, four p fence posts. I mean, not fence posts, I'm sorry, uh, posts to the porch. So we're going to now make two parallel lines coming down from the end here. Make two parallel lines coming down here. Notice the spacing in between these. Um, if you had a ruler, you could you could do this actually, you know, perfect. But but we're going to push forward and do the best we can here. It's also good sometimes to draw without a ruler to try to make shapes and lines uh, from free free form. Um, it builds. Uh, it builds muscle memory, what we call muscle memory in art, which is also uh, um, a, a PE term, a physical education term, but it's also true with art. Okay, So now we're going to draw the line at the bottom of the porch here. Now the goal of this is when we're finished is we're going to ink it. Now notice what we have here. We just have a shape that almost looks like um, a railroad track, but this is the lines that we need to build the porch, those lines. Now we're going to go over here and start with this line, making up the back portion of the wall of the actual cabin. Okay, now there are there are some jagged shapes here that we'll include later, but I'm just trying to get first the general shape of this structure. Okay, I'm drawing a parallel line now underneath the bottom of the porch. Notice how the yard slopes up. Okay, so it's actually coming down here and it's coming up towards the top of the porch like this. Okay, so we want to include that in our drawing. So the yard actually comes up. So I'm going to go ahead and put that shape in up to the edge of the porch here that's going to come back. So there's the edge of the porch. Now I want to go ahead and put a line down here for the uh, portion of the porch that you can see. Now for the roof, this line here that we're going to make from the edge of the porch going up to the start of the house, it, it's a line that is probably about a 20 degree angle. It's not very steep. I mean, it, 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 it basically goes up to the edge and then straight across then for our roof. So our roof is going to go running long ways. Say for architectural drawing, it's really important to notice the degrees of angles. Angles are something that can throw your entire piece off. If you have an angle that, that, that is, is, is it's off by so many degrees, then your entire structure will be off. So now we're going to finish off the top of the roof here. Notice I'm just pulling this line out a little further. It's going to come down to a chimney over here, but before we work on the chimney, we're going to finish this edge of the porch off by bringing the line straight up, connecting it, and now we have the angle about where we want it for the roof, okay? So there we go. We have basically the structure created. We're going to go ahead and add the edge of the actual cabin. Now what we'll do is we want to go back over it in detail a little bit later. This is an old rundown cabin, so that's a good thing when it comes to actually creating 
lines that are going to, you, you know, you don't have to be perfect because the shapes of this is meant to look old and rugged, okay? And, and we're going to pull this line going down the back of the porch and then we'll add our doors in. So go ahead and draw your doors in. Now, of course, you could see right here is a great example of um, when you're eyeballing an art, an example for art, or whenever you're actually using a ruler for it. Notice the distance between this door and that post. Now notice the distance between my door and this post. It's a lot closer, but that's okay. Um, you know, we're, we're basically just going to get the general idea of constructing a landscape drawing with some architecture in it uh, for today. Now the door is open slightly, so you're doing a lot of rectangles, you're doing a lot of squares and shapes like that. So this door is slightly ajar, okay? You can see how we can do that by just a little bit of shadowing. And, you know, like I said, we'll add in all the detail shortly. Now on the edge of the house, the house that comes back, the cabin does, to, to this structure here which makes up the chimney. The chimney starts with a straight line coming up the side of the house, comes to a certain point, now we're going to draw the angle coming in. We're going to do two parallel lines to make up the side of the chimney. See how that works? Now we're going to do two more sh parallel lines going straight up the side of the cabin on both sides right here. All right, that gives us the basic first start shape of the chimney. Now the yard comes back. Of course, the chimney cuts off at the top up here, comes down, and that makes up our chimney on the side of the house, okay? Now, we have the structure pretty much put together for the cabin, and what we can start doing now is working on um, drawing in a little bit of the detail uh, for the, the um, um, environment around it, okay? And we're going to add first is a tree. This tree comes up in the yard here, so we'll add that up. Now, I'm going to ink all this in a little bit, and whenever I do that, you'll see how it comes together. But um, for the purpose of the penciling portion, you're going to draw lines. They don't all have to be exactly like my lines, but notice though that when I draw a line, um, I'm going to follow up with a parallel line to that shape um, right next to it. Now these lines get smaller um, and they, 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 they come together to a point when you're making the branches. See how these lines slowly come together? And for when you're drawing foliage and you're drawing trees, you know, the, the shapes of the branches uh, they don't have to be exact for your rendition of, of a certain uh, drawing. You just need to basically get the shape down. That's what we want, okay? You draw branches coming out different directions. Now, um, once we have this tree drawn, we have scale now. We know where this is, and we can see now where the back portions to the environment come in. Now, to do this properly, you want to first mark out your entire um, um, territory that you're working in, your real estate, what we call real estate, because this is where the yard ends to this drawing. And you can see what I've done here. The yard ends here and back here. There's a fence, and then of course we have this fence coming down the yard in the front, which we're going to make a straight fence. We're not going to do the jagged uh, zigzag um, shape to the hours. Okay, so the fence comes back. Now, now we have the fence. Now we can start actually focusing on more of the uh, environment. There's a tree here off to the left. Um, start out by drawing two parallel lines coming up from the ground to get the trunk of the tree. Now this tree has foliage on it. This has leaves on it. So we're going to do a little different approach for this tree than we did the first. We're drawing these parallel lines though coming up. Um, of course they're parallel to a point and then they start coming together. Now we're gonna add in the foliage. Now for this particular tree, um, what we're going to do is we're going to start off towards the bottom and, and I'm going to do mine a little different than Robert did. I'm going to actually start drawing um, these little zigzag shapes, these little shapes that, that look almost like um, um, a centipede, okay? And they're going to go around, they're going to go up towards the top. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to mask out the entire area of this tree first. See how I've done that? So I've just drawn this general shape around it. Because once I have that, then I can go back. You can see portions of the branches here, but you can't see all the branches up at the top. The tree is, has a full canopy. That means it's really, really um, lots of foliage at the top. But you can see some of the branches towards the bottom. 
So we start putting in these little centipede shapes, okay? They're basically little clouds um, all around the sides and the bottom of the tree. You can imagine that light's coming in from the top up here like this. A little bit of shadow on the paper, but you can see what I'm doing here. So the light's coming in, right? And then as the light's coming in, though, this area at the bottom is going to be darker than the top, right? Now we have the tree portion in the back. We have more trees, so we can add more of these shapes. Remember, it's just, just like a centipede. There's no real um, um, you know, exact way to do this. You're basically just adding in these little curved shapes that look like clouds almost, okay? And once you have these little lines that zigzag and twist about, you know, you, you could go back in later and add the detail. Two parallel lines coming up from the ground, then they branch off just as the other did. This is going to be filled in as well all around. So we're going to put more of those zigzag shapes. This uh, tree in the front doesn't looks like it doesn't have a whole lot of leaves on it. So we've gotten away with that. All right. So in the back now, we notice how these straight lines that he's placed to represent more of the hillside in the back here. So we have this hillside that goes up. And then we have these trees out to the left that they, they appear that they don't really have any leaves on them. So we're going to just go ahead and start out like we did with the first tree. Two parallel lines coming up. Once you have that, then you're going to be adding some more branches, which are basically just um, lines coming off from one line. So you have one line coming out, and then you have these other lines coming off from it. Now you notice, though, that you can see the thickness of this branch on this tree, but you can't on this one in the back. It's only one line making up that shape, okay? Now, we have the general idea, general shape of, of our landscape drawing. Now, what we're going to do from here is we're going to ink it. I'm going to be speed drawing through this process of, of uh, inking this, but you follow along with me at home, and you can see how I'm going to be making my lines, which are going to be a series of these straight lines, like this, for the different elements. And then also notice the cabin does have wood uh, that makes up the cabin, so we're going to be drawing these these lines that go across, and we're going to be inking all this in, okay, to make the effect of the landscape drawing. So let's go ahead now and jump into the speed drawing portion. You follow along with me at home with your pen, and um, we should have us a, a, a landscape drawing at the end. This is what we've come up with here. Now I purposely left off the um, I purposely left off the fence in the front, mainly just because of time. Um, I really wanted to give you a sense of how this is put together using these lines and, and, and some cross-hatching for shading. Now, you know, the difference between, of course, uh, Robert's work and my work, um, he, prob he probably had a lot more time to work on it for wood, but also um, he likes to use a lot of these straight lines. So what he will do is he will take his pen and we'll go ahead and just mark on the one we just finished. And he'll do these these series of lines like this. You see those straight lines I made in between the trees there. And he'll go over all of his work. So he'll draw it out first and then he'll literally go over top of all of it like I'm doing right now with these series of these straight lines. Now, there's not a lot of cross hatching though in his work. You, you could, you could be able, you'd be able to tell this if you looked really close. Now you saw basically right there how long this took for me to go ahead in between these trees. And, um, you know, if I was taking my time, of course, it would be a lot different. But we're, we, we look at this and we could get a sense, though, of how long it would take to go over this entire drawing, doing these series of these straight lines. And he does this to fill up space. And you notice just right there what I've done. Uh, this tree, uh, you could see in the front, leaving this portion blank gives the idea that there's light coming down on those trees. That's where it's being reflected. And you know, you could, if, if you wanted to, you could put these series of lines in your drawings behind the trees. That's what I would do. Um, Robert didn't do that for his. That's just a choice of the artist. But I like to leave some space in there when I'm doing this type of work uh, because I think it looks like light reflecting. And you know, if you added all these series of lines through the entire background behind the trees, you would get the effect of one that there's there's more there's more going on in the background of the picture, right? So it gives us a sense that the picture hasn't just stopped with these trees. 
The, also though, the lighting. Uh, you can see that just by adding in these darkened lines going down in portions of the drawing where there is uh, no lines or anything, you can see how it pops out more. I really like that effect. It takes a very long time to do. Now, another thing that I wanted to point out is on the chimney uh, for the stones. Whenever you go over and you're, you're creating stones, don't overthink it too much. I just did a series of, of, of shapes. I love them's different. Mason, masonry work, if you look close at a chimney that was put together using, say, riverbed rock or, or rocks from the, you know, down at the creek or something like that, which they did that many times back then. When they would use rocks that they would uh, find um, uh, nearby the resources available to them. Um, you'll notice that they're all different. They're all shaped differently. So don't overthink it too much when you're putting those together. Literally, it's a series of making shapes like this. You may do one here, here. You may connect this one at the top there. This like series of these just shapes like this, okay? And then of course, you know, within the two lines making up the edges of the chimney. So that's pretty much how you put together one of these pieces. If you enjoy doing architectural work, then there's a lot of opportunities out there for you. If you're a student at home right now and you're thinking, I love drawing homes, I draw homes all the time, I draw floor plans, I design my own place, and this is exactly the field for you. So we really appreciate you tuning in today. Um, again, I'm Christopher Epling. Um, we'd like to thank Pike TV for making this uh, show available uh, for everybody in the viewing audience. And then also we'd like to thank um, The Holler at theholler.org. So it's theholler.org. There's an art holler there, an art workshop holler that you could go in, uh, register, and you could, you know, we could communicate through the holler, send me images of your artwork. Uh, we'd like to post those and show those on the show and um, see what these resources available. Past shows are available there and lots more. Um, if you, any of these art supplies that you saw today that I use, any local art supply store carrying uh, materials, you'll be able to find all that there. No problem at all. And uh, look up if you have time. Uh, be sure and look up uh, Robert Powell's work. He's a Kentucky. He's a Kentucky um, author. We're not promoting the book or anything. Just um, wanting to talk about him as a as an artist. So just check out his work online. And there's lots out there for uh, for you to take a look at. And uh, again, thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you've learned something and followed along. And until uh, next time, uh, keep drawing.